Good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I'm your host, Krista Burns, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly online event. Uh, we are a webinar, we're a webcast, we're an online show. Um, the terminology is all over the place for these kind of things. Um, but whatever you want to call us, we are here live every Wednesday morning at um, 10 a.m. Central Time. If you're unable to join us on Wednesday mornings, that's fine. We do record the show every week, and they are posted to our website for you to watch at your convenience. And I'll show you where exactly where that is at the end of today's show. Um, we uh, So if you do see anything that you wanted to watch, you can always go there, share it with your friends, neighbors, colleagues, anybody who you think might be interested in any of our topics. Um, we do a mixture of things here, uh, book reviews, mini training sessions, web tours, um, <clears throat> demos, basically um, anything library related uh, we have on the show. We, we don't have a lot of, um, that's pretty much all our criteria. Is it something that libraries are doing, something libraries might be interested in, sometimes something a little out of the box that you haven't heard about yet that you're wondering why it's on the show, but you know, trust us, there's always something, you know, we always bring it back to somehow it can be used or related to libraries. <clears throat> um, we do have Nebraska Library Commission staff that sometimes do um, sessions about product services and programs we have here through the commission but we also bring in um, guest speakers and that is we have this more um, with us this morning um, Liz Hiddle who is from uh, Scribner Public Library right here in Nebraska um, is on the line with us good morning Liz Good morning. Good morning. Um, and she's going to be telling us about, as you can see on the screen here, Pokemon Go and how you can um, use it, um, do things with it. I'll be broad and vague about it <laughs> with your library. Uh, you may have heard about it, possibly, probably that this is some new thing and you might know I'd be playing it. I myself do play. Um, how, um, but you might not be sure what it is. And uh, I saw Liz actually wrote an article for one of our library, regional library systems, the uh, Three Rivers Library System, their newsletter. Um, she wrote an article about it in there, and I thought, awesome, we can have somebody come on and tell everyone about a lot more about this. Get it to you know everybody out there who watches the show, learning more about what it, Pokemon Go is and how you can use it at your library. So I will just hand over to you, Liz, to take it away and tell us all about it. All right. Hey guys, Liz here. Um, I had a whole thing where I was like, I was the one who wrote the article and Krista must have liked um, it, but you already said that. Oh, sorry. Um, <laughs> no, you're fine. Um, I'll be I want to apologize now. right away. I've never done one of these before, and I haven't made a slideshow in almost 10 years, so I apologize mm -hmm. ahead of time. Uh, sure, right. it'll be fine. <laughs> um. I'm going to start with some basic Pokemon knowledge for you guys right away in case there's people who don't know anything about Pokemon. All right. Pokemon began as a simple hobby for a man named Satoshi Tajiri who loved catching insects and tadpoles as a child. Wanting other children to experience the same wonders he had, he formed Game Freak with his friend Ken Sugimori. Uh, the game was originally called Capsule Monsters, but got changed to Pocket Monsters because of copyright, which then got into Pokemon. Sugimori made the original artwork for the games. The project nearly drove Game Freak into bankruptcy, and Tajiri worked many unpaid hours. The first Pokemon games were Pokemon Red and Green on the Nintendo Game Boy. Pokemon Blue followed shortly after due to high sales, and then the Media Factory made a Pokemon trading card game with its own set of rules. Uh, there's 102 cards in this first set. I own lots and lots of these cards growing up, and I never knew how to play. Nobody I knew really did either. We were just It was just so cool to collect and own them all, especially if you didn't have a Game Boy like I didn't. I've only just played the actual games for myself last year because you can get a Game Boy emulator app on your phone, which is pretty neat. Um, if I can, I'll figure out how to get that, and maybe you guys would want to have that on your phone. And then in November 1996, the first Pokemon manga was made, which was mainly a, ga a gag manga starring Red and his rude Clefairy. The franchise grew so popular that an anime was made, premiering on April 1st, 1997. I was six years old at the time, but I remember getting up extra early just to watch the show, which I fell in love with immediately. The show is about a young trainer named Ash Ketchum, who was named Satoshi in Japan after the creator, and his Pikachu, 
And all original fans remember how much that little yellow mouse hated his trainer. But then Ash risked his own life to save Pikachu's, and a deep friendship was born, and the rest is history. That's where I first I saw go. Pokemon was in the cartoon, yeah, was on, on TV. <laughs> yeah, I didn't know that his name was Satoshi in Japan. I thought that was pretty no. neat. Yeah, I like that. <laughs> um, I could go on about all about Pokemon's beginnings and origins, but you guys are here to learn about Pokemon Go. I just want to give you some background on the phenomenon. A good website for more info is the one I have on the screen, bubblepedia.bubblegarden.net slash wiki slash history of Pokemon. Uh, 2016 is the 20th anniversary of Pokemon, which is probably why Pokemon Go was released this summer. It was good timing. In the first five days, Nintendo's market went up $9 billion. That's right, nine zeros. It's funny, though, because Nintendo didn't even make Pokemon Go. It was made by Niantech Inc., who used Ingress's map markers as the basis for their own. Ingress is a phone game like Pokemon Go. I guess it's military-based, kind of. I don't know. I haven't played it, but it looks really fun. Unfortunately, when Nintendo pointed that mistake out, their market went down a bit, but it's obviously not hurting them. Now I'm going to include stats that I couldn't have in the article because of space. All right. Pokemon Go made $3.9 to $4.9 million on the very first day. Over 30 million people downloaded it, and it became more popular than Twitter and Tinder. It only took 13 hours for the app to overtake all the others. Over 26 countries have people playing, and at its start, 26 million people were playing it daily. The numbers have dropped quite a bit recently because of people jumping off the bandwagon and updates making the game a bit more challenging, but there's still quite a lot of people playing. I lost count of how many librarians had the app when I went to the youth retreat last month. I thought that was so cool. I was so happy and proud that so many of you were playing it. Now on to the mechanics. The Pokemon Go app uses your phone's GPS and camera and tracks you in real time so you can go out and explore the world as a Pokemon trainer. It ties in real landmarks, buildings, and bodies of water using the same system as Ingress into gameplay. Your whole area is laid out on your map and the historical artistic landmarks are made into Pokestops and like my library, Pokemon Gems. The goal is to walk around as much as possible to catch Pokemon, hatch eggs, and collect items. At the moment, the game does not offer trainer battles, and there's only one generation of Pokemon available to catch. 140-something different Pokemon compared to 761, and they are, they're making a new generation, so there's going to be even more Pokemon. I guess there's already 40 more. I don't even know how they're coming up with them now. <laughs> um, if you've read my article... A bunch of this will sound familiar to you, but I had to cut a lot out for room, so I'm going to share those lost bits with you guys as I go. To start, players have to sign in with Google or join the Pokemon Trainer Club. Depending on your cell service, you might have to walk outside to kickstart the map, the, app, the map and the game into working. After the professor is done with you, three Pokemon will appear. These are the classic starters, Charmander, Bulbasaur, and Squirtle. But did you know that if you refuse to pick one and keep walking away, you'll have the chance to capture Pikachu as your starter? Isn't that cool? I wish I would have known that and I would have made that our first starter for the library. Yeah, I didn't I didn't know that until it was too late for me either. I'd picked uh Yeah. I think it is Squirtle as like, my first Aww. one, yeah. <laughs> He's cute. I, but... <laughs> Charmander. I did eventually catch a catch a Pikachu though. Right here. Yeah. So <laughs> Then the walking starts. There used to be a little bar with outlines of the Pokemon close to you on the app, but with the update, they got rid of it, so you just got to wander around to find them. But this is much like Game Boy games where you just wandered around in tall grass until you encountered a Pokemon. The player's phone will vibrate when a Pokemon is close by. Then all they have to do is keep walking towards it, and their camera will turn on so they can view the Pokemon as if they're literally right there. It's funny that there's a, I have a Paris picture up there. That's not ours, but the first time we did it uh, on her phone, because I can't get it on mine, she wanted us to at least experience it, which was bad, because now I want to really, really play it, and I should have just never done it. Um, but first thing I did, I walked out to kickstart it. I caught Charmander, walked back in, and there was a Paris sitting on our desk. It was pretty cool. All right, then it's time to catch the Pokemon by tossing the Pokeball into the green ring. 
something I was <laughs> rubbish at trying to catch Paris. It just it started waving its arms and laughing at me, I think, because I was doing pretty bad at it. It takes some practice, but you'll get used to it. When caught, the Pokeball will shake three times and then sparkle. Boom, a new Pokemon. Get as many as you can, even if they're the same darn thing. You'll need them. All right, more mechanics and features. Pokestops are locations for players to get items, and they're fresh every five minutes. So if your library is a Pokestop and people are just chilling on their phones, it's because they're farming for items, eggs, and Pokeballs. Pokemon gyms can only be accessed after the player has reached level five, and then they will be prompted to choose a team. Yellow for Instinct, Blue for Mystic, Woo! and Red for Valor. There are now gym leaders for each of the teams, Spark, Blanche, and Candela. Candela is the fierce one, Blanche is the smart one, and Spark is the silly one. There's <laughs> lots of funny memes and comics. I, I would have spent probably a good ten minutes on them alone, so I just have this one picture of them, but they're really funny. Mm -hmm. Spark is so funny, it made me want to switch to Instinct, but I'm Team Mystic. Yeah, we're Mystic too. Yeah. Can you? Switch? I feel like that's a good. I feel like that's a good team for librarians because it's all about knowledge. And everything. It is. Yeah, I think that's why I went to it more. Yeah, as well. I had that because they do explain what they are, so you can find out more about them before you make your decision. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Gyms are controlled by one team at a time. If it's your team, you can train and register your Pokemon there. If it's controlled by another team, you can battle against the leader and try to take the gym over. Each gym has two numbers, the prestige and the level. The level shows how strong the gym's Pokemon is and how strong you have to be to fight it, and the prestige is like the gym's health points. The higher the number, the longer the gym will be under the control of the reigning team. If you challenge teammates to battles and win while well, it's under your team, you raise the prestige. More prestige, more defenders for the gym. To battle, you have to tap your screen as fast as you can to unleash your normal attack. For a power move, you have to tap and hold longer before releasing, but make sure not to miss, or you just might take a lot of damage to do none yourself. You can also try and dodge using a swipe on the display. It usually comes down to who unleashes the most attacks and who has the highest CP. You'll get used to it. Speaking of getting used to it, people who have never exercised before are now getting plenty of it because of the game. Players are losing weight and becoming more active, and people are also socializing way more than they ever did, bonding with total strangers over the game. You notice this picture on the right, we've got young people, old people. I had a picture earlier where there was a pregnant lady with her baby. Just people are making all new friends. Individuals have shared how it is majorly helping them with their anxiety and depression, and I read one account where a man who was afraid to leave his own home for over five years finally left because of Pokemon Go. He was able to leave his yarn. The game also helps teach the metric system since it uses kilometers instead of miles. And you have to walk two, five, or ten kilometers to hatch eggs. So many people were playing that the servers kept going down, as I'm sure you all know, or at least heard someone grumble about. They've been working on it so that happens less, though. Pokemon Go has business booming for thousands of people and businesses. You can get paid to drive people around while they're playing a Pokemon chauffeur. Businesses have set up sales and pitches to based on the game and even set out lures to attract more Pokemon to the location, which in turn attracts more customers. Even though the hype has kind of gone away, I still see people advertising with Pokemon. It makes my geeky little heart happy. <laughs> oh, I love These the are Pokemon some, this, here. <laughs> I have some library stuff. Uh, my library's put up signs and to let patrons know and science welcoming people to come in and catch Pokemon. Like right here in the middle, uh, this library took all their Pokemon stuff and bought some new Pokemon stuff and made a display. Uh, and made Pokemon cl clubs, a stop. Uh, I want to do the thing where it's like, this gym is controlled by this team, and then you put a... Uh, or you can make, um, when we get our new library, I want to do this table where you can have, you know, water, snacks, good stuff for them to have while they're walking around. But I found I found a lot of um, borrow ones, which I thought was pretty <laughs> funny, considering it's a kid's game. But plenty of adults playing it. And people setting up stands and helping people out, which I thought was really great and cute. 
and I want to do the what did you catch at your library? You put up a sign and people write down what they've been catching and everything. Um, or the there's a Pokemon scavenger hunt. Like you can print out cutouts of the Pokemon and hang them all over the place and be like, mm. they're at this place, they're at this place. That's what I want to do. Um, got there's lots and lots of ideas to do. I like the one uh, with the, this Pokestop gives out free library cards. <laughs> yeah. I thought that was adorable. I really mm -hmm. I really want to do that. Oh, this I see. This is our library. This, this, okay. I like the one on the previous slide that had the um the this cut out this the silhouettes of them. It says at the bottom there, return your full sheet to the summer reading club desk. So they combine because it came out this summer, which was perfect timing. Yeah. Um they they connected it to their summer reading program, it looks like. That's Yeah, that would have yeah. I wish we would have done more with it. But it's actually, like, these are our signs we put up mm -hmm. right when the craze started happening. And it was the same day that Anika called me and asked me to write the article, and I was keyed <laughs> out. And then my boss started printing out all these signs. She's like, find places to hang them, Liz. And I was like, oh, my gosh. But <laughs> sad thing is there really isn't that many people playing it in my town, which is really sad. We were supposed to do... Like, I can't have it on my phone because I have straight talk, and straight talk status is terrible, and I wouldn't have space and all that. So my boss, Angie, put it on her phone so we could experience it, and we're supposed to, you know, go on walks with the kids and do a whole thing. But there's only, there's only one kid who's still playing it, and his stuff is messing up. We're trying to fix it for him. Otherwise, there aren't very many people playing it at all, which just makes me sad because... It would be fun to do a lot more. Yeah, and, yeah and lots of things you can connect it to. Like on one of those previous pictures I saw, they had obviously the the books um, that they you know connect it to reading the different yeah. books that have been written from about from based on it. Um, and if you had the TV yeah, show on DVD or something, you know different things you can connect to it. Yeah. Um, and it is yeah. anything, but if your device can do it or not, I know. Um, my phone cannot do it because it's a Samsung. It's a Galaxy S3. It's too old. Yeah. So I too. had, but it's I had, too old with Android. yeah. So I have a tablet, a new, a, uh, a, uh, uh, Tab Four, I think it is, and it was able to do it on that. So I jumped up to just a slightly bigger device. You can do it on tablets and iPads and things as well if your phones are not the ones that are um, capable of it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's. It sucks when it doesn't go on all of them, but, mm -hmm. you know, you do your best. Yeah. Um, and there's plenty of ideas out there. I, I should have included way more, but I was trying to get it all together. <laughs> um, not all businesses are happy about this, and post signs telling people to go somewhere else or that you have to buy something to come in and catch Pokemon. I saw one that said, Pokemon are for customers only, which I just thought was really <laughs> rude. Um, unfortunately, official buildings like churches and hospitals have had to warn players not to come in and disturb those inside. Some of these buildings, like I've seen churches, they're trying to get more members by saying, hey, come on in and catch Pokemon. Some buildings are going with the flow and welcoming players, but it's always best to ask before waltzing in. Mm -hmm. Of course, and especially there's things about everything. Also, but going into someone's, not just like there we go. Oh, yeah, trespassing into in people's PR. yeah areas. Mm -hmm. It was getting pretty. There was a point where it was getting pretty bad. That you know, even though there's a screen, which is the one on the far left, right when you start the app telling you to please be aware of your surroundings, people were just not paying attention. They were walking into dangerous areas and falling. They walked into streets, into other people, so on. People are also trying to play it while driving when they shouldn't even be messing with their phones at all and causing accidents. If I would have known how to do videos, I found a video of uh, somebody running into a cop car because they were playing Pokemon Go while driving, <laughs> which is just terrible. <laughs> um, nice. Uh... Luckily, one of the updates is a screen that comes up to tell you that you're going too fast and that Pokemon mm -hmm. Go is to be played while walking. It I've will heard stop you from if you're going too fast. Yeah, I, I get it on mine. It will so it will stop and block you from being able to being able to play, and yeah. um, 
You need it, to click I'm a passenger. Exactly. But I've been hearing yeah. there's people who get it when they're walking. Apparently they're walking too fast or something. <laughs> I thought that was funny. Eh. Um, but I, I hope it's at least helping with the driving problem. I haven't heard much else about it, but there's always those people you know, who will use their phones while driving no matter what, which is sad. And then you see on the bottom a teenager was walking around playing and found a dead body. Mm -hmm. uh, players are being ambushed and mugged. Um, so it's always good to play with a partner or a group, especially if you're out at night. Always have someone with you. The list goes on. Because of this, people actively demean the game and its players, or they're just being rude and trying to spoil everyone's fun in general. You know, anytime there's a big popular thing, there's always people sitting there trying to, you know, harsh everybody's mellow about it. Mm -hmm. But uh, you just got to ignore those people and have fun and pay attention. Be sure to tell your patrons that they can sign up for Charity Miles, a nonprofit organization whose app runs in the background while you're playing. Every mile you walk or run earns the charity of your choice a quarter. Every mile biked is 10 cents. There's over 30 charities on the, do on the app to donate to already. There's also Wolf Tracks, which tracks your walks and donates to a rescue of your choice in exchange for your time. Many animal shelters are offering for people to walk dogs and other animals while they play. And since people like to take pictures of everything, the pictures of the animals they're walking has led to a huge boost in adoptions, with some of the players deciding to just, to just keep the animal they're walking. There are even shelters that are having to borrow animals from other shelters because of all their animals have been adopted, all thanks to the publicity of Pokemon Go. That's awesome. I've heard about those that walk the dog, come walk our right, dogs I, and take them out. Yeah. I wish there was a shelter closer to here. <laughs> Um, unfortunately, like I said, I can't play myself. My director put it on her phone a while back so we could all play. And that fell through a little bit, but I think we're going to start, I want to start um, trying to organize events around it, especially now that summer reading's over. There'll be more kids wanting to play it because there's less to do. At least I hope. Otherwise I'll have like one or two kids playing. But, you know, one or two is better than none. But... It's been a while since I played it because there's only the one kid playing it, and if I would have never played it at all, I guess I wouldn't mind. But now that I've played it, I'm like, I want to play. <laughs> um, you can always do a resurgence of it. I mean, as new updates come out, like you said, there. I think when they start adding more Pokemon, oh yeah, that's other generations, that that will bring back people because if people have kept have, as it says, they're catch caught all of them. You kind of wonder, okay, what do I do now that I got them all? <laughs> yeah, there's okay, a battling yeah. in the gyms and stuff. That's... If you're into that, if you're doing that, but once they add more, that'll be another bump back into I think people being trying to check it out again. Yep, that's that's what I was gonna say. Uh, all in all, I think Pokemon Go is one of the few great things to happen in 2016, and we sorely needed it because we know how bad 2016's <laughs> been. Um, it's too bad it's not as popular as it was, but like Krista said, maybe that will change with future updates and more Pokemon to catch. I know they're working on it, and I know that a big thing everyone wants is trainer battles where you can verse each other. Mm. I don't know how they're going to set that up, though, if they'll be truer to the Game Boy games, where if you lose, you lose half your money, and uh, you don't lose Pokemon. Mm. I would hope they don't do that, because that would be... If you're not particularly good at it, you'll end up with no Pokemon. <laughs> yeah. But hopefully that'll change and more people will start playing it again. I haven't seen any of them release anything recently, but I hope they're working on it, especially because, like you can see in this this picture I have up now, there's Mega Forms and more Legendaries and mm -hmm. almost 800 Pokemon. I think there's going to be over 800 when um, Sun and Moon come out this fall. So Wow. Yeah. It might be, yeah. <laughs> I would hope that they would update and add at least the second generation because that's another hundred something Pokemon to catch. Mm. I know we've got. Uh, I've gotten more in, interested in it when um, traveling to new places. Um, yeah. Kind of get worn, not. I wouldn't say bored, but just going to the same places here in Lincoln. Um, we know certain parks and the weirdly the cemeteries have lots and lots of stops in Pokemon and you go there a bunch and then I was like, well, you know, kind of worn out from that. And then I traveled to New York the last week and I, we were like, Oh, I wonder what about oh, anything new. Yeah. I was like, Oh, I wonder what kinds they have here. So I, well, I didn't have a lot of time, but um, we did get more into it, walk around the parks there trying to find certain ones. Um, 
So it does give a resurgence when you travel somewhere new as well that you're, you you suddenly think, because it is if you keep track of what people are talking about it, friends and what they'll say, oh, well, there's tons of these particular one in my town, and you're like, I've never even seen one before. Uh, that's crazy. And then you know, they do um, spawn as they describe, say it in in different locations. So sometimes yeah. some will be more popular in one city, and then others in another city. Um, they're all supposed to be eventually everywhere, re- you know, somewhere close. But yeah, I know that I had people talk about that. They see more of certain kinds in certain areas of the country. Oh yeah, I had a friend. Um, she lives in Idaho, and you know she only had so many Pokemon, but she could never find her favorite. And she recently traveled to Florida, and she found her favorite Pokemon ah, because they nice. have her Pokemon there. Cool. Which I thought was yeah. neat. Some are rarer in different um, areas, yeah. Yeah. Well, I hope you all liked my presentation today, and I will answer your questions if there are any, as best as I can. Mm-hmm. Oh, I do have. Um, I know you all know. I, I'm sure you all know. I don't have a picture. I can't really point her out on here. There's a Pokemon called Eevee, and she can evolve. Well, now it's um, eight or nine different forms, but on the game there's only the first original three, mm-hmm. and Vaporeon's my absolute favorite Pokemon of all time, so that's who I would involve her to. But apparently, if you specifically name your Eevee, one of the three names, it will evolve. Like You have to name it Rainer, um, R-A-I-N-E-R, to make it a Vaporeon, Pyro to make it a Flareon, and then Sparky to make it a Jolteon, which I thought was funny because the one kid who's playing it a lot, his nickname is Sparky. <laughs> so I told him, I was like, you should name your Eevee you Sparky and evolve it into a Jolteon. Mm-hmm. And he's like, no, I'll just see what happens. <laughs> yeah. So you can do that and just go, you know, yeah, then it's a surprise. But, and I actually did do that. I did... Um, when I uh, first few times I evolved, her, I didn't. We didn't. I hadn't learned that trick yet, um, so I just did it randomly. Um, but then when I did that, I did try it for each one, and it, it did. It worked. It made it into each one of those particular types. So that was pretty cool. If you're interested in the whole collect every single version of everything, that's one that's a little yeah, trick. That's, yeah, that's definitely what I would do for sure. <laughs> yeah, That'd be awesome. And oh, someone did uh, comment and just explain. I think I might have read this, but I but it's been a while. Said so the na- those three names are the names of the three trainers who use EV in the TV show. They are. That's where it yeah, comes um, from. Yeah. When you first, when you first, oh gosh, I should have included a picture of that because they look really funny, and their hair is different. Mm. Um, they actually like the very first episode where you find them all. There's it's three brother, it's four brothers, and three of them. One's got blue hair. One's got Red hair, one's got yellow hair, and they have Vaporeon, Flareon, and Jolteon, respectively. And then their younger brother, who's got brown hair, has just got an Eevee. Mm. And they're, you know, they're trying to pressure him all the time to evolve his Eevee, and he's like, no, my Eevee's perfect the way it is, which <laughs> you don't ever hear about Eevees. So I thought that was really sweet. But that is the first time, because that's also, that's also when Ash learns about evolution stones, too, and... Mm-hmm. They're telling him, you should take the, th- the Thunderstone and evolve your Pikachu. And then later on, there's a whole episode about it, about him struggling with the decision. And mm-hmm. it's been 20 years, and he still hasn't evolved Pikachu. So <laughs> <laughs> I think he's just going to be a Pikachu like, forever. No, going to keep him as, as his original forever, yeah. <laughs> but, um, last I knew, like I, I watched the anime pretty far into it and then it all just kind of got weird and I stopped watching it and then it skipped around so I couldn't uh, keep up but uh keep track yeah what was going on last I knew Pikachu has moves that his type shouldn't even have so he's he's pretty powerful which mm-hmm. is why um if you guys know about Team Rocket that's why Jesse and James are always trying to steal him and you would think it's like there's all these other Pokemon they could steal for their boss. Why are they going after this Pikachu? And it's because it's the most boss Pikachu the in the Pokemon one. universe. Yeah. <laughs> um, cool. All right. That that was, a, I think, very concise, good uh, ex- explanation and introduction, especially the beginning part, Liz, about um, I actually didn't know about the beginning, how, how it became how the history of the game. Yeah, um, I didn't. I, didn't I had either. never even looked into that before. <laughs> I, yeah, I never had either, and I really liked that when the anime first started, his name was Satoshi, mm-hmm. and that's where they got Ash from. I just thought that was cool. Yeah. 
It's always nice to see things like that. Cool. Um, all right, so we do have some questions and comments here, um, but if anybody does have any questions you want to ask or anything you want to share about what you've done at your library or what you've seen about it or um, anything about that, go ahead and type it into the questions section here. Um, we did have somebody back at the beginning, I was just was, um, didn't want to mention it back then, uh, but uh, who explained that, that other game, the Ingress one, and Ingress, Ingress, um, yep. is a sci-fi game about an alien invasion in a secret war against those that support the invasion and those who are fighting it. Um, okay. And they say I in know, many I... ways it's similar to the teams in Pokemon Go, so it's... It's, yeah, I I didn't know what it was about. I I just looked either. military to me, but I knew it was about aliens because someone, um, I can't remember his name. There was a presenter at the youth retreat last month who mm. was doing something about augmented reality, and he brought right. up Ingrid. Uh, said okay. it was about aliens. Yeah, I've heard I've I'd heard about that one a while ago, and then when Pokemon Go came out, I first didn't even make the connection until someone uh, somewhere something mentioned that it's actually built on the same um, the same locations, like the same places, same kind of thing. It uses the the mapping features and actual um, notable locations. You know, the, the churches and the and the hospitals and the businesses and whatnot are the same ones that are in that game as well. Yeah, um, yeah and, and that, I was older, like, oh, cool. The older the building. Uh, the more advanced of a thing it can be, like our library is a gym because it's one of the oldest buildings in town. And if our old high school was still considered a building, like it's mm -hmm. um, what's the word? It's condemned, so it's empty. I'm uh -huh. sure that would have been a gym because oh. it's so so old. I didn't know it was related. It was it was that's how I was always wondered why some things that you think are like big important sites aren't gyms, but it's based on their the age. Yeah, it's, it's huh. based on age and um importance too like mm -hmm. that's why in cities almost every museum is something almost mm -hmm. every important building you can go into and learn is something mm -hmm. but that's something else too um, I'm hoping they change it when they update people from rural areas are having a harder time playing because there's not a they lot turn of it stuff, on and yeah. there's, there's like it's just empty whereas you turn it on in a city stuff everywhere Pokemon mm -hmm. everywhere and uh, there, last I knew, they were working on that so everybody could play however much they want. Because that was mm -hmm. when they first, um, when they first made it. That was one of my very first questions. I was like, well, what if you live? Because I used to live in the country. I was like, well, what if you live in the middle of nowhere and can't go anywhere? Mm -hmm. What are you supposed to do? Just capture all the. If there are any Pokemon over and over. <laughs> yeah, and even in some areas, like residential areas, I live in Lincoln. On the south side of town, yeah. but it's a res where our house is is residential, so we're not. And when you open up sitting in my living room, there's not businesses or schools or anything near me, um, and it's like a dead zone. <laughs> yeah. um, we had some kids come over for a barbecue one day, and they all whip out their devices, and I'm like, "Oh, guys, I'm so sorry. <laughs> you're not gonna have much fun with that particular game here. Our our neighborhood is is a, you know, if you're lucky, you'll find." you know, one or two. <laughs> yeah. So find something else to play. With. <laughs> That's why I want to get, um, I wish, like I have a reset my phone recently, so I don't have it on my phone anymore. But um, when I figure out how, and you, if you guys want it on your phone, email me. Uh, I will ask my friend how to get the GBA emulator back on your phone mm. because then you can play just about any Game Boy game, which, and I was playing... Pokemon Red and Pokemon Green, which isn't as fun as Red, and mm -hmm. <laughs> I think you can play some of the newer ones too. But the newest, newest ones, you have to have special Game Boys for that, I think. Mm -hmm. right. right, the brand well. new games, yeah, because they're yeah they're always they're still. I mean, this game is still Pokemon itself is still coming out with new games re regularly. Yeah, yeah. so um, it is not a old game that is just resurgence. It's 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 been every few years there's some new versions that come out so they're still going strong <laughs> um we do have a question and this is I, you kind of mentioned this before i think it, um do you think any the new features and the pokemon go plus device will be enough to get and keep people in the game do you know much about that that pokemon um, plus thing i've seen i it. have actually yeah. heard i've actually heard that it's a big nuisance 
Um, oh, really? People trying to use it aren't having the best time with it. But uh. I have a friend. I have a friend in California who was staking out a GameStop to get the last one. So, hmm. yeah, I don't know much about the devices. I I should have looked that up more. Yeah. But um. Yeah, you're right. I'm saying I just typed it in and it get like the top articles are saying it improves the grind, but it can be obnoxious. That it can keep disconnecting yeah. from your phone. It's supposed to yeah. be a um. And not oh oh okay a smartwatch type thing. Bluetooth is a Bluetooth bracelet, so you don't have to keep looking at your phone. This thing you wear on your wrist, like a Fitbit or something, will then notify you that there is something near, and then you yeah. can um, pull out your phone to actually use it. So yeah, it depends on yeah. um, if you have a really really good phone, then yes, get the Pokemon device, mm -hmm. and you know, depending on your cell service too, it'll make it more, you know more act, uh, immersive and stuff, but if you don't have, like me and a couple other people I know, if you don't have the best phone, it's probably not worth, because I've heard they're not cheap either, it's probably not worth it to get it, because they'll just keep disconnecting and make it you know, more mm. frustrating, and you might not even want to play. Yeah. I've also heard there's a thing, too, you can hook it to your belt, and it's a little electronic device, I'm not exactly sure what, but it's a Pokeball. And when your device notifies you there's a Pokemon nearby, you can pretend to throw the Pokeball <laughs> at, the, at the Pokemon instead of tap in your screen. Uh -huh. so I thought that was okay. Cool. Yeah, that's what it says here. The Pokemon Plus is a device that you can use to either – it'll alert you when you're going near a Poke Stop where you can collect the balls and extra things you can use. And that you can – if a Pokemon is near the actual critters – and supposedly you can use it just to go ahead and – well, okay, you can't see it on the screen, but you can use it to actually throw the ball. So you're just blindly throwing it using this device, and if you get lucky, <laughs> you might catch one. <laughs> okay. That sounds – it keeps you from falling over staring at your screen, but then you might get more frustrated if you keep trying. And you, you can't even aim, but it's uh, – oh, well. So yeah, hopefully, yeah, I don't – yeah. Hit somebody. <laughs> I'm not seeing here anything that explains about yeah, I'll have to look up. Yeah, check it out. Pokemon Plus. It's on the website. We're gonna have links to all these websites. The link that um Liz mentioned earlier and the main Pokemon Go website that has information about this um the devices as well. Um and so hopefully, yeah, that they'll get people more interested in the game. And if the like anything, whenever there's new technology, there's gonna be, you know, bugs and, and things that need to be worked out um before it is a uh, um Works perfectly. I mean, when the when the when the game itself first started out, like you said, it would the the servers would crash a lot, and a lot of people were getting frustrated because it was so popular. Um, I guess yeah, they didn't realize it would be so popular. Yeah, <laughs> the the company was not expecting that at all, and there is a few weeks of um, lots of grumbling, as you said. Yeah, and all the all the Pokemon fans are like, well, of course we're all gonna play it. Yeah. <laughs> It's kind of a no-brainer. Not catch them all. So um, they have seen that particular issue has been mostly resolved. So over time, some of these things will work themselves out as they, you know, more in practice and see how it goes. Yeah. Oh, here's on Amazon. What does it cost? Uh, Third-party sellers, ninety-eight dollars. Yeah, so it's pretty pricey to get the little bracelet thing. So. Yeah, it's not necessary. Just an extra perk if you want. Okay. Yeah, they they've oh, got yeah, they've supposed to be thirty five dollars as manufacturer suggested retail price. So if you get it or just get one at thirty five. So if you're uh, but if you're just searching on Amazon and finding other people selling it, of course they're gonna raise check up the price a bit. If you get one yeah. thirty five, that's not bad. Yeah. Um, someone else also mentions there is oh the Pokemon Buddies thing that version that just came out um, with a new update. Um, have you seen anything with that yet? No, I have not. Yeah, it's something where you can have you can pick any one of the Pokemon you have um, collected and um, make them your buddy for the moment, and they walk with you. Um, you uh -huh. don't see them on the screen, but there's a little picture of them next to your um, picture your trainer's picture. Do they have and, that on um, one of the, I don't remember which Pokemon game it is, but one of the more recent ones, you can have that, you choose a Pokemon. A, a, a companion, yeah. Like a companion that goes around with you, yeah. And it says it, that particular one, if you're trying to collect, and this is something to get more into the details of how the game works, you 
when you are playing the game, your Pokemon will, um, when you catch one, you earn candies. And that when you get a certain number of pieces of candy, you can use that to evolve your Pokemon or add more features and, and power power ups to them and make them play better. Um, but which, if you have a particular one that you're interested in really working on, um, make them your buddy and they will just randomly collect, um, find candies and eat them and, and then, um, well, not eat them, they'll collect them as you're walking along. And then you can, you know, have more of those to do whatever it is you want to do with that particular uh Pokemon. So That's it's not cool. just a, oh, isn't he cute? He's walking with me. It actually is a pur- it has a purpose, which I thought was nice. Yeah. <laughs> so if you know I want to really evolve, like you said, an Eevee or something, um, make them your buddy. And then whenever you're doing your walking, have the game open. Um, you'll be getting your walking, your distance in for your um, eggs hatching. Um and for the if you're doing the charity one, and then that that particular one will also collect more um, candies to keep um, evolving them, and then you can switch it any time to any one of the other ones you might want. That's cool. That's, so they are adding new things to it every now and then to make it more. I'll, I'll just tell my patrons that I don't think they know that. <laughs> it was just within the last couple of weeks, maybe I forget exactly. I haven't really played with it much, but I saw things about it, and I, j- I just made Pikachu mine just because I hadn't really thought about who I wanted to do, but just for, you know, to try it. <laughs> yeah, someone else has been the last couple of weeks, so it's very recent, yeah. Mm-hmm. All right, anybody else have any other questions? We're almost at the, um, into our, uh, and nearing the end of our hour this morning. Um, does anybody have any questions or comments or anything you've done at your libraries? I know when you did your article in, uh, you know, type in your question section or let me know and I'll unmute you. I know when you did your article, Liz, they also, and I don't know if it was that you put in there, they added, um, some little ad to, I think, talk about, I think UNO had done, University of Nebraska and Omaha had done some sort of events. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, another good there. thing. Um, well, I guess it's getting a little bit colder now, so you can't do it. And I wish we would have done it, but we were really busy with summer reading and everything. Uh, another thing you can do is a pokey walk, where you all start at the same point, turn your game on, and then just go walking around your town. Mm-hmm. And then someone records all the Pokemon you're getting, or how much fun everyone's having, or what gets what. And then if you want to make it into a contest, have the person keeping track, the person who went got the most Pokemon at the end wins a special like a book or something. Mm-hmm. Right. Oh yeah. A prize of some sort, like some reading things. Yeah. Yeah. I, I wish we would have done that, but we really, at, at one time, the most kids playing it that I knew of was like five, but we're a really small town. So that speaks, mm-hmm. right. but there's more people right. playing it. And, um, like we're, we're called, considered Scribner Snyder because of this village mm-hmm. that's really close to us. I've seen more people playing it in Snyder, which is so small it's considered a village <laughs> compared to our town. But that's you know that's mostly adults, and there's actually quite a few Pokemon gems in Snyder because those buildings are even older. Mm-hmm. So slash the game connection to those, yeah. Um, and you can find more that's going on with it. I just did a quick Google search of Pokemon Go Nebraska, and there's a couple of Facebook groups for Nebraska and Lincoln, uh, maps for Nebraska, Lincoln, and Kearney, Pokemon Go locations around Omaha, 10 best sure places I'm, in Nebraska to catch Pokemon. So I'm sure uh, the League of Librarian Gamers page probably has mm-hmm. stuff too. Yeah. I really need to get on that, <laughs> on that page. Oh, I was hearing about it a lot at the yeah. East Retreat. Is when they analyzed the different pokey places that, that they knew and best places to catch Pokemon in the Cornhusker State as of this summer. Ralston, Gretna, La Vista, Garing, Plattsmouth, Shadron, Papillion, Scotts Bluff, Seward, and Alliance. Hmm. Huh. Interesting. So, yeah, definitely you can find more things going on to figure out what's going on there. Yeah, and you mentioned that um, – oh, this one person actually on the show says Scotts Bluff has a lot. Yeah, that so it seems like sometimes these suburbs of, of cities and meals, me, medium-sized cities are having a lot of them. Um, yeah, but you just mentioned. I can't even imagine Omaha. Oh, gosh, yeah. I bet that's insane. <laughs> but you just turn it on and it's like. 
College campuses. I know when well, there was earlier this summer, um, the University of Nebraska here in Lincoln, they opened up Memorial Stadium where the Huskers play the football team for an evening for, I think it was like four hours, and people were able to go into the stadium, actually. So they did an event. Like you said, you create an event um, and have people come, and the place was packed. In the end, I think they said, oh, 1,700, some thousand, over a 1, thousand people came there to play the wow. game. Um, but as you're wandering around, you can see the campus, college campus, every building on campus. There's so many different locations for either gyms or stops. Um, so things like that where they've got a lot of buildings are related together seems to be some places that end up with them as well. Um, but you just mentioned, and I, I don't know how this is going to go, the weather changing. It's going to hit, winter's coming. And yeah, going to have to but get creative then, with what you could do with them because, well, unless people decide I'm just going to bundle up and go anyways. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's not going to be as say, easy. Yeah. I was about to say, um, the newest game coming out, it's called um, the Alola region, and apparently um, they're giving um, like original generation Pokemon new forms. So I was about to say maybe mm. they'll have the ice forms come out, but that's too new. Mm. But it would be cool because like, there's a snow, a Vulpix, it's a fire Pokemon, but there's a snow mm. version. Mm. And then that executor tree thing, it, turn, it gets really tall, like a palm tree. And a lot okay. of them have snow versions, which... I don't get because it's a tropical region, but Pokemon's going to do their own thing. <laughs> <laughs> huh. Well, that's cool, yeah, if they come up with different ones, that, like seasonal type ones or something. Yeah, something seasonal the game. It would be neat. Yeah, the Pokemon Sun and Moon game, yeah. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, and it's supposed to be like Hawaii, but apparently the alternate versions are snow, which... <laughs> I don't quite get, but it's cool. They're cool looking. I love Vulpix and Ninetales, mm -hmm. and they look awesome. Yeah, and Alola that we're talking about is a part of the Pokemon world. It's not not something. It's yeah. not like in real world. <laughs> they have all they have their own you know areas and and geography. <laughs> Just to clarify that. Okay. All right. Doesn't look like anybody has typed in any other questions or anything else they want to know about it. So I think maybe we could uh, wrap it up for this morning. If anybody has any urgent things you want to know, anything else you want to share, get it in there right now while we're wrapping up. Um, thank you very much, Liz. That was that was great presentation. Um, the basics that people need to know are definitely about the game. Um, there's a lot more to it if you do get more involved in the game. Um, but for just at least getting started and knowing about the stops and how did you get some of your patrons or your your people who use your library, um, they may come in too and ask you guys, what is this thing? I do not know what's going on. And people keep talking about it. Somebody tell me something. <laughs> Yeah. Um, this if anybody has yeah. any more questions, you are free to email me. I'm mm -hmm. always researching it and finding more stuff out about it because mm -hmm. I still have plenty of friends who play. And or like if said, there's anything about Pokemon, period, you want to know, feel free to email me yeah. or look up those websites we've got for you. Right. And like you said, um, they're always adding to the game as well. So what we are talking about today, when they do some updates coming up, some new things may be added to it. Um, so keep on top of that uh, cool all right so thank you very much Liz that was great all the information we need to know I'm going to um, pull back presenter control to my computer um, do, 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 and get over onto this screen there we go um, so thank you that was great um, if you we do post up the recordings of the show um, afterwards and uh, Liz, will you send me your slides and I can put them up with our um, recordings? Yeah. Sure. Just email that to Definitely me when you get a chance. Um, I'll include that. We also have our um, delicious account here where I grabbed the links and I got the one here that she had mentioned where the history of the whole Pokemon game is here. Um, I'll also put a link to the um, Pokemon main site as well. Now, it is a... Um, mobile game of course so when you go to the Pokemon website which I have linked here that's about the game and talks about the different things but you then would go to the, you know, your app store to get it either for your um, Apple or uh, Google or uh, Android device whichever uh, you have and there's the information about that Pokemon Pl Go Plus device we're talking about and this is it's like your Fitbit bracelet but it's specific to uh, 
just what um just related to playing um the game. So how we go back here. All right. Um so yeah, that will wrap it up for this week's Encompass Live. Um, the show has been, is being recorded, and it's going to be here on our main page, right here underneath our upcoming shows. We have a link to all of our archives, and this is where we have all of our previous shows. And the one, here's a more recent one, we have the recording, just to show you what will be there, um, presentation, if anybody has the slides, and any links will be related. So the same information will be up when the recording for today's show goes up. Um, that could be sometime later today. Uh, depending on how quickly um, we post all of our recordings of the show to YouTube. So they're out there just publicly for anyone to watch. Um, and it depends on how much YouTube cooperates, <laughs> how quickly things will get uh, converted and posted up there. But I will announce when it is re ready. And you'll be able to go over here and um, see the recording and get a hold of the slides. Um, we also have a Facebook page for Encompass Live for the show. So if you are a big Facebook user, uh, pop over there. Um, just look for us. And we have links off of our page to this. Uh, I post reminders um, uh, when the show's starting. Here's one for today's show. A lot reminding people to log in today. Um, when the recordings are available. There's one here. I post on here and just reminders about upcoming shows. So if you're big on Facebook, give us a like and you'll be notified of what's coming up on the show. Uh, so next week's show, and just confirmed, did it just just recently got this figured out. While I was actually I was on vacation last week, um, we're going to have a show on um, next Wednesday about library escape rooms. If anyone of you have done any of those kind of things, you get locked into a room somewhere, and there's puzzles and um, things you and riddles and things you have to figure out to get yourself out of these rooms. There's a couple here in Lincoln. I'm not. I, probably up in Omaha, but um, our uh, Morton James Public Library in Nebraska City has created one of these escape rooms um, at the library. So um, the director there is going to be with us next week to tell us more about that. Um, we'll have some more details here. I, like I said, I just got it on the schedule for t today. So definitely uh, register for that show or any of our other ones that are coming up here. You'll note in a couple of weeks there is our one week off that we do, just to remind you, in um, the third week of October, it is our Nebraska Library Association and Nebraska School Librarians Association annual conference, and we do not hold Encompass Live that week, so um, there will be no show. That's the one week we take off, so we do the show 51 weeks of the year. <laughs> so mm -hmm. just a note, reminder that that will be the week off that we'll have, um, but as you can see around that, we have everything scheduled out. So sign up for any of other shows, join us, and... Um, yeah, just make sure I get anything done. All right. So thank you very much, and we'll see you next time on Encompass Live. Thank you, Bye -bye. guys. Thank you. Thank you, Liz. That was great. You did awesome. Uh, everything we needed to know about it and stuff I didn't know yet. I thought I'd – I'm good at reading. all. You know, I'm a librarian. I read up on stuff, but eh, can't know, no, can't learn everything. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah, I love doing it. All right.